What's cracking big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. Last week, we did our running back rest of season rankings. That was prior to week 10's games, obviously. So things have changed a little bit. We're going to go over my biggest risers and fallers when it comes to the running bike position going to week 11 and for thy rest of season. Okay. And then we're going to dive into our top. How many did I do? 30, 36, 38, maybe 40. I don't know. We're going to do rest of season wide receiver rankings video as promised to y'all. I know the trade deadline hits. So it's probably terrible timing. I'm also going to try to do this entire video in one take. So I don't actually have to edit it and I can get it out to you as soon as possible because I'm filming this right now at 12, 10 PM Eastern time, Tuesday, November 17th. Okay. So keep that in mind. Whenever you watch this, I filmed it like two hours before I put it up or two hours before you watched it. I should have set up my intro to be inside the software. You mean it's in the computer? I fucked up. But, but, but DeAndre Swift did not fuck up. DeAndre Swift did not fuck up. And he is the biggest riser of the running back rankings this week. But we're going to start from the top. And we are going to move our way down, okay? James Conner fell two spots for me, okay? He's getting the workload. And, and listen, listen, you can go back and watch the running back rankings video from last week. It'll be a lot more helpful probably in giving you uh, more context behind what I'm talking about and, and the rankings that I did have. And uh, the rankings will fully be posted for running backs, wide receivers, updated real time rest of season on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash BDGE is where you will get them. You don't even have to listen to these videos if you don't want to. But last week I had James Conner up at running back six and I moved him down to running back eight. So obviously not a big faller, but he is one of the people that moved down a little bit in the top 10 and I didn't make too many moves in the top 10. So I figured I'd share it with you. He's getting the workload, but like this has become a passing offense completely. And they're just, you know, their short game is, is a lot of dump offs to their wide receivers. And James Conner's just not been efficient lately. So James Conner moves back a little bit. The biggest faller, of course, is Christian McCaffrey. He moves from running back 10 all the way down to running back 27. Okay. I don't even know if uh, there's a move I would make that that makes sense to trade for him. And I talked about him in yesterday's waiver wire video. They say he's out multiple weeks, which means uh, they probably expect him to miss not only this week, which they pretty much already announced him out for, but he's probably going to miss the next week because you don't say multiple weeks if you already missed one of the. You don't come out after a game you already missed and then say we expect a multi-week absence unless you're thinking he probably doesn't play in either of these next two weeks, which brings him to his week 13 bye. Thus, you are missing him for another month of the season. And by that point, we don't know what the Panthers record is going to be. They might fucking stink and they might not even put Chris McCaffrey back on the field. So he moves all the way down to running back 27. J.K. Dobbins falls a little bit, running back 23, down to 29. Again, just not getting the workload. Mark Ingram is, is back into the lineup and they are using him similar to how they used him earlier in the year. And that's obviously bad news for Mr. Dobbins. Melvin Gordon, uh, I read somewhere on Twitter today that over his last three games, Melvin Gordon has a combined 90 rushing yards and zero touchdowns. This Denver offense is just not getting it done on the ground, and I really want no part of it. So he moved from running back 25 down to running back 31. And then this is where it hurt, man. The the Chase Edmonds move. The Chase Edmonds move coinciding with the Kenyon Drake move. Chase moved down from running back 22 all the way to running back 34. Kenyon Drake has clearly cemented himself back in as the starter, regardless of how efficient he's going to be going forward. This was obviously a great matchup for him to be back and, and run for 100 fucking yards. The Buffalo Bills run defense is atrocious, which makes Kenyon Drake look good. We'll see what happens when he starts playing poorly. But we also saw that in the beginning of the year when Kenyon Drake played poorly, Cliff Kingsbury didn't give a fuck. He was like, I'm going to leave you out there and I'm going to continue letting you go for 3.2 yards a clip. And listen, again, when coaches show you who they are, believe them because Chase Edmonds seems to be the pass catching back once again. So Chase Edmonds drops from running back 22 to running back 34 rest of season. Kenyon Drake goes from running back 30 up to running back 19. He's a guy who's going to continue to get volume. I'm not excited about him because he had the good game 16 for 100. It's not a great fantasy game and tougher matchups are ahead for Kenyon Drake. So he is running back 19. That's like a mid to low running back two going forward. But DeAndre Swift running back 24 all the way up to running back 14. And I went off about him in yesterday's video. So if you missed that, I will link it down below in the waiver wire and just overall week 10 recap. This week felt different. They really, really used him as the workhorse. He popped off for 150 yards of scrimmage, went over 70% of the snaps for the team, which is something that 
we had not really seen from him this season. And, you know, they came out and said, we are going to use him as the workhorse. He is the starter. He's going to be our guy for this game. And then they did so, right? Even when they were up big, they did not use AP to milk the clock. They did not do any fuck shit, any fuck boy shit that Matt and Patricia typically does with carry on Johnson or whatever. So it is Swift's backfield. He moves up to running back 14 for me. So definitely not going to be like he's a solid RB1 right now. But if he puts up RB1 numbers for the remainder of the season, I would have zero shock, zero surprise. You will see zero fucking emoticons from this person. Okay. Uh, Kenyon Drake already said running back 30 to 19 Raheem Mostert as as the weeks crawl by and he's closer to getting back on the field with the Jermichael Hasty injury not that it really affects Mostert but he goes from running back 28 up to 24 he is still on the IR they have their bye week in week 11 he is eligible to return in week 12 so I'm assuming he will be on the field in week 12 as a starter for the 49ers so after next week he will continue to rise up the rankings probably up to like a top 18 back but because he still has a buy on his schedule I am still not pulling the trigger as, you know, a really, really solid RB2 at the moment. Okay, so those are all the running back updates. Again, if you want to follow it in real time and get the rankings, those are available to my supporters, my 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 uh, my main girls, my main bitches over at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash boy, doy, joy, oi, B D G E. Let's talk about wide receivers. And just like we started off last week's video. We are going to show you the wide receivers that still have a buy on the schedule. And bear with me because I'm clicking 38 different things, trying not to have to edit this video because Snacks and Animal are on the way to the headquarters. We are filming Fade the Public in a little bit, so I've got to be efficient with my time. And this is how I do so by wasting time telling you that I have to be efficient with my time. You love it. You love to hear that shit from me. Remaining buys. We've got Diggs. A-Rob and Brandon Ayuk. These are obviously just notable fantasy wide receivers. So those are, you know, three pretty heavy hitters at this point in the season. And then week 13, we've got all three Tampa Bay Bucks wide receivers and the Carolina Panthers are also on their bye. So you'll be without Godwin, Evans, Brown, Robbie Anderson, and DJ Moore. So obviously that's going to take into account their rest of the season rankings a little bit. Now I did this differently, right? I was talking about on yesterday's live stream how for rankings next season, especially in season weekly rankings, which you can also get on Patreon, I'm going to break it up into tiers because a lot of the questions I get are like, you know, should I start X or Y during those live streams? And uh, it's like wide receiver 22 and wide receiver 23, where, you know, it's, it's, there's no difference in value for me in the start that week, other than you literally just have to pick one of them to put into the place. And I was like, I guess I'll just do this one. And I think I'm going to turn the light on real quick. So give me a second. Watch me make myself look like a ghost. One, two. Hey, that's a little bit better on the lighting, I think. I don't know. I can never tell what lighting. It always looks good on my screen. And then when I watch the videos afterwards, it looks like fucking shite. But we're bike. And we are talking about, I don't remember what we were talking about. But, oh, tiers. Tiers. So this is actually what I did for the rest of the season rankings. I talked about tiers because the guys are so close that I don't actually have a preference in who you start. They're just all the same kind of value prop to me. And uh, I think I could just give you my my basic sense of who's around the exact same ranking. And then you kind of make your choice from there. I'll give you, I'll, I'll lay out the big facts for y'all. But I probably, it, it just, it's just like literally a coin flip. Like we're not, we're, we're, we're fucking weathermen out here. We're weathermen predicting shit that we have no idea how to actually predict because everything in the NFL is a ridiculously small sample size. And we barely know what numbers are predictive at this point. We just know some players are good. Some players aren't good. And we know that Devonte Adams is really fucking good. So he makes up tier one by himself. We're going to skip past that one. We're going to go to tier number two, where we have DeAndre Hopkins, Tyreek Hill, Julio, DK, and Keenan Allen. I would be excited and ecstatic to have any of these five players as my wide receiver one on my fantasy team. No need to dive into the grit. Now, tier three is where things get a little crazy here, okay? So we're starting off with Stefan Diggs up at wide receiver seven. Now, he still has his buy coming up this week, which is why he's at seven. Otherwise, if he did not have his buy, especially with the John Brown little ankle spankle little injury going on there, I'd probably have Stefan Diggs in the tier two. But the tiebreaker is having him at wide receiver seven, tier three, because of the bye week. I actually think in my rankings that I did not update, I moved Terry above Stefan Diggs for that reason. Because of the bye week, I don't see either of them as uh, one guy that like separated themselves necessarily, especially because the tiebreaker is there for the eye bye week. So let's talk about Terry. Let us talk about Terry because I mean, listen, if you own Terry, 
um, you love him. And if you don't own Terry, you probably still love him. Like there's just nothing not to love about Terry McLaurin this year. He is a baller. He is just work with me here again. I'm like multi triple double fucking quadruple six tuplet fucking tasking right now. So when we look at Terry's rest of season schedule, I'm going to try to put the schedules on the screen for you guys so we can kind of talk along with it. Again, if you're watching via the podcast, if you are watching via the podcast, that didn't even make sense. If you're listening via the podcast, we are putting up charts and shit on YouTube. Okay. So why is that above that? Here we go. Have a day. There we go. Okay. Terry McLaurin schedule over the next six weeks. Cincinnati, Dallas, Pittsburgh, San Fran, Seattle, Carolina. This is a beautiful fucking schedule. You see Pittsburgh and you kind of assume that, oh, that's a really tough matchup, but they have not been good against wide receivers for fantasy, okay? Because they're also scoring a lot of points on their end of the ball. So um, I'm not worried about the Pittsburgh matchup. Cincinnati, Dallas are obviously juicy as fuck. And then in the first round of the playoffs, assuming y'all got a buy or playing 10-team leagues, Seattle. Seattle. He might literally win you that week. You have San Fran, which is very tough in week 14, but Carolina in week 16, uh, despite them being, t and, and those rankings on the right side are fantasy points allowed to wide receivers up to this point in the season. So Cincinnati, for example, has allowed the seventh most fantasy points to wide receivers right now. Dallas, the fourth most Carolina, the 21st most. But when you kind of put some context behind it, uh, Carolina stinks, right? Fantasy points 21st, but they rank 31st in coverage per PFF and their grading system and their bottom 12 per football outsiders too. So that gives you a, a little bit more of a predictive measure going forward when it comes to it. Like it, it's just cream for Terry, man. It's He's basically shown this year that he's both matchup proof and quarterback proof. That's a dangerous, dangerous cocktail. And he's been shadowed four times this year, shadowed four times this year. Week one, Darius Slay, which is the worst game he's had, five for 61. Pat Pete in week two, seven for 125 in a tug. Trayvon Diggs, week seven, seven for 90 in a tug. Last week, James Bradbury, week nine, seven for 115 and a tug. So Terry, uh, yes, he is up at wide receiver seven for me. We have Diggs at wide receiver eight. And then we have Will Fuller at uh, wide receiver nine. Listen, this is actually five spots higher than consensus. And some people might question this a little bit, but if you're a Will Fuller owner this year, if you're a Will Fuller owner this year, you know just how damn good and consistent he's been all year, right? He had the week two game where he was a decoy with the hammy and he posted a donut. And then this previous week where the winds were like 72 miles an hour and neither team passed the ball whatsoever. He obviously had a bad game and it was 80,000 mile power winds, whatever. Without those two games, we have a seven, like in the two normal games, not a decoy and not with crazy wind, we have a seven game sample size of Will Fuller this year. And in those seven games, in those seven games, he has scored a touchdown or eclipsed 110 receiving yards in every single one of them. Like if you don't own Will Fuller, I'm not sure you're actually aware of how good he's been for fantasy this year. He's gone over 100 yards receiving in four of those seven games. And then you look at the schedule and it is a little bit dicey. It is a little bit. I honestly, if he had a great schedule going forward, I would not be, um, I wouldn't be against, where are you Fuller? Show, show, show the goddamn, push the goddamn button. Show the goddamn schedule. Um, okay. It looks scary, but here's the thing. We're going against New England next week. They've been okay defending the pass. They haven't been anything special on that side of the ball this year. Uh, Gilmore has missed, Stephon Gilmore, who would probably shadow Will Fuller, has missed three straight weeks, and I don't know if we see him in week 11. Detroit, obviously, not a bad matchup. They just allow so much to the running backs that teams don't necessarily need to pass the ball on them, but Houston is terrible at running the ball, so I don't expect that to be the case. Indy is obviously really tough. Um, they get, He has to face them twice over the next five weeks. But again, they're phenomenal against the run. Uh, and I know Henry went over a buck against them last week. But this is this is like Derrick Henry time, man. Derrick Henry, when you hit double-digit weeks, week 10, week 11, week 12, he forms into his he, he, he moves into his final form where defenders do not want to tackle him. They're 10 weeks into the season. They're tired. And Derrick Henry just keeps getting thicker and thicker and thicker and bigger. And that's why he had a big game, obviously. And that's why he will continue to have a big game into his juicy playoff matchups. But... Indy, phenomenal against the run. Again, Houston cannot run the ball. So I'm assuming they're going to have to turn to the passing game. Okay. Prior to Derrick Henry's 100-yard game, the leading rusher on the season had 72 rushing yards. It was Kareem Hunt, and it took him 20 carries to get there. So I do expect them to go pass heavy. The last two games Fuller has played against Indy, he went 7 for 140 and 4 for 49 and a touchdown. So obviously a, a bit of a different team when it comes to Indy. Uh, in terms of defense, but like, I don't, this is not a matchup I'm really shying away from. Chicago's obviously really, really, really shitty matchup for passing 
offenses. Uh, but that Cincinnati game in Week 16 is going to be beautiful for Will Fuller. Again, a, just an absolute winner. Just an absolute fucking winner here. Okay. Uh, rest of the tier, we have... What do we got? We've got Will Fuller. We've got A.J. Brown. Again, like A.J. Brown, I love, but talent-wise, he's an elite wide receiver one. Uh, just you never know what you're really going to get from the Tennessee offense. So you just have to kind of factor that into the spectrum of of where he's going to finish on a weekly basis. Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen I have at wide receiver 11. And somehow he is four spots lower in ECR, which kind of makes no sense to me, to be honest with you. He's wide receiver eight on the year right now. He showed last night against Chicago Bears that he could still get it done for fantasy against tough teams. I mean, he's been a bit inconsistent this year since Justin Jefferson broke out, but he's tied with uh, Terry Kill and Devontae Adams for the NFL lead, nine receiving touchdowns. That That's what he brings to the table every single game. I mean, nine touchdowns were in week 10 right now. So I, uh, I'm i literally just like listing my wide receivers in E-Town get down, which I beat Animal. So he is still winless, 0-10. It was, it, was, it was a fucking close game. It scared the shit out of me. But Thielen unlocked that shit up last night. He's my wide receiver 11. I have no problem with, uh, with him all the way up there. And then we have after him, which I know a lot of people are going to be asking about, Michael Thomas. And to be honest with you, I was hesitant ranking him all the way up at wide receiver 12 as a wide receiver one. He's been bad this year for fantasy, obviously. And the last two games have not been encouraging whatsoever. And now we have Jameis under center who didn't look good this weekend. And while yes, we're like used to seeing Jameis sling the ball out there and we're used to seeing what we saw. Um, Excuse me, I got a text message. This is why I can't fucking do it. This is why I can't go through the entire thing without it, without editing because I just have wildly terrible ADD. Uh, we saw, what the fuck was I even talking about? Oh, Winston didn't look good. And and here's the thing, like while we're used to seeing Winston as the gunslinger, that was Tampa Bay's offense under Bruce Arians. Like that is not the same offense we have in New Orleans. Their offense is Kamara, throwing the ball to the Kamara, running the ball, stopping the run. It is not good for Jameis Winston, in my opinion. And I don't think he's any better. I don't think he's better for Michael Thomas than Breeze was. And I think it might be a problem because one, like you're getting Taysom Hill coming in on 20% of the snaps and probably running the ball on most of those. So whatever run percentage they already had, their run rate, which is high, it's going to get even higher now with the quarterback taking, you know, seven, eight, nine extra plays where he's actually running the ball. So yes, he's still Michael Thomas, but I I, I don't know. Like I'm, I don't have a good feeling about Mr. Michael going forward. And then we round out the tier. Allen Robinson, you know, again, elite in every sense of the word in terms of talent, but he still has his buy next week. And as we saw last night, man, the fantasy points are going to be wildly inconsistent because his quarterback fucking stinks. Calvin Ridley right behind him probably could be, you, you could definitely argue that should he should be higher, but he's dealing with a foot injury. As we hear better news throughout the week, I'll probably continue to move him up a little bit. Again, that will be reflected in the rest of season rankings via patreon.com forward slash BDGE. And then, uh, and then Tyler Lockett, who was all the way up at like 11, I want to say, or something like that. But he's got this knee sprain that he's dealing with. And I'm not optimistic. I, I think there's a possibility he misses this upcoming game this week because they play on Thursday night. So any time missed is obviously going to be, you know, a little bit of a downtick when we only have five or six games remaining on the schedule, especially if you're a team fighting for the playoffs. Like you might only actually have three or four games on your schedule remaining. So Tyler Lockett moves down. As we hear more about the injury, he will start to fade in and out of consciousness okay and we'll move over to tier four where we've got Deontay Johnson at 16 Kenny Galladay Juju Cooper Cup Tyler Boyd Chris Godwin Mike Evans it, it, it it's just it, it's impossible to rank the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receivers the Tampa Bay wide receivers here's here's how here's how I'm going to put it simply to you for for Pittsburgh I'm not playing the guessing games anymore I'm not playing the guessing games anymore pretty much every week going forward as well as the rest of season rankings is going to be Deontay Johnson the highest Juju a little bit behind him and then Claypool a little bit further down the rankings as well. Okay. That's it. I'm not going to think too hard about it. I'm not going to change it based on what happened in last week's game. Assuming that that's the exact same fucking thing that's going to like Juju has a better game than Deontay Johnson this weekend by a little bit. And we're going to rank Juju ahead of Deontay Johnson. Not what, not the way I'm going to play it. I think Deontay Johnson is the most talented wide receiver in that group, meaning I'm going to continue to rank him accordingly. Okay. I'm ranking them based on talent. And here's the thing, like 
because these guys move all over the place, like Claypool's downfield, taking shots over the middle, and Juju's in the slot, sometimes outside, and Dante Johnson, good flanker, moving around a lot. Like, we're never actually going to know who the real wide receiver cornerback matchups are. So to try to predict, like, oh, this guy might shadow Deontay Johnson this week, I think is wildly ignorant. So unless the team comes out and explicably says, we're going to put Jalen Ramsey on Deontay Johnson for this week, sure, I will go out of my way to downgrade it. But other than that, I'm not going to be doing that. Here's the thing. Deontay Johnson and Juju Smith-Schuster are yet to be shadowed this year per PFF. They have a shadow coverage chart, and they're yet to be shadowed. Claypool has been shadowed twice. Claypool was shadowed by Bradley Roby in week three and Malcolm Butler in week seven, which I bet a lot of y'all didn't know that. So just assuming things is probably a bad idea. I do have the rest of the rest of season schedule just to kind of take a peek at. Uh, we have, uh, don't, don't pay attention to those numbers in the rest of season rank. I think I just left it at the default by accident. Those are not right. But they have Jacksonville next week, Baltimore, Washington, Buffalo, Cincinnati, Indy. So some tough matchups, some beatable matchups. Regardless, again, I, I said I'm not going to think too hard about this. It's Deontay, it's Juju, it's Claypool. And uh, they're usually going to be guys I want to start in my wide receiver spots as well as in my flex spots. So that's the way I'm handling Pittsburgh wide receivers going forward. Kenny Galladay dealing with the hip. Clearly, I'm way higher on consensus than uh, I'm way higher on Kenny Galladay than consensus. Eight spots higher. Here's the thing: like, if he is back for this week, which I don't know if that's going to be the case or not, he has a great slate of Carolina, Houston, tough Chicago, Green Bay. Obviously, Tennessee is a phenomenally good Week 15 matchup. Again, he's a guy where the talent is, you know, arguably up there with the. AJ Browns and, and those guys where and Allen Robinson's right it's a, like they're a tier of their own basically where uber talented uber talented shitty situation shitty quarterback or banged up or something like that where it's like the situation out of their control right now is taking their talent away from their actual fantasy value Kenny Galladay falls into that and that's why he's all the way down at wide receiver 17 because he's got two favorable matchups over the next two weeks and if he can't go for those two then he's lined up for a tough slate over the next six weeks rather than you know a half and half split so if Kenny G plays this week we also don't know if he's going to be like 50 percent in the first game he comes back so wide receiver 17 honestly might be a little bit too high but I still you know you still kind of have to believe in the talent and what else have we got in that tier yeah that's about it Chris Godwin Mike Evans both guys I like but they also have their buy in week 13 and we don't really know what we're going to get on a week to week basis but Mike Evans definitely moved up had I done the rest of the season wide receiver rankings video last week Mike Evans would be a very big riser because now we've seen multiple games back to back where Tom Brady's getting super comfortable with him and he's starting to see the targets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Tier five is just a monster. These are all guys that like you want to have in your lineup, but you don't need to be starting all the time. They're, they're like phenomenal flex plays. If you have these guys in your flex, you're more likely than not hitting the playoff scene or at least close to it. We have Brandon Cooks at 23. We have Justin Jefferson at 24, DJ Chark at 25, T. Higgins at 26, DJ Moore at 27, Claypool at 28, Robert Woods 29, Robbie Anderson down at 30. So you see DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson both of the buys. And I have moved DJ Moore above Robbie Anderson because Robbie Anderson really has not performed well as of late. Over the last five games, I was looking at some splits and from weeks one to five compared to weeks six through 10, like he has completely kind of falling off the spectrum there going from like 90 something receiving yards down to I believe it was 58 he's not getting as many targets and I don't think he's scored since week one so like he's man it's tough because he, he was just so fucking good over the first half of the year and yeah he hasn't scored since week one so it's been nine straight games without scoring a touchdown his receiving yardage total over the last five weeks 77 74 48 63 21 last week uh so that gets pretty dicey there and we're seeing dj moore have a little bit of a resurgence so the targets are starting to split themselves up a little bit and teddy bridgewater might be a little banged up i don't know if he's going to roll for week 11 which will obviously be a little bit of a downgrade for thy wide receivers in carolina uh the other guys again this is a tier this is a tier like i don't actually love dj chark over t higgins and i don't blame you if you want t higgins over chark or jefferson because he's clearly the wide receiver one there um, and Chase Claypool is in that tier. Like a lot of rookie wide receivers here that are performing really well. Robert Woods has really fucking fallen off, right? ECR has him all the way down or all the way up at 20, where I have him down at 29. I mean, listen, this is just a run first offense. Every time they're within the five yard line or the 10 yard line, 
they are running the ball. Like Malcolm Brown, Cam Akers, Earl Henderson, they're scoring a ton of touchdowns, and Jared Goff is just not throwing. And Jared Goff also needs a really, really nice matchup in order to have big fantasy games. He he's he struggles getting it done under pressure. He struggles getting it done against tough defenses, which means the wide receivers are going to have a tough time doing so, especially with low volume, right? We expect this Rams team to be a high volume passing attack, but they're not. They're not, and we have to change the equation. I do have Cooper Cup uh, up at what did I have him at? Nineteen. I had Cooper Cup up at nineteen, and um, and that's pretty high, obviously. But he typically just gets the best matchups every single week, so I will continue to have Cup. A little bit higher there. Uh, so that was tier five. We'll get into tier six. Yeah, we went, I think, all, all the way up to uh, wide receiver 42. So tier six is an interesting one as well. It's like guys that you're definitely not confident in, but you still like a little bit. So Devontae Parker um, missed out on a touchdown, which I think people will be a little bit higher on. I still think he's going to be the go-to guy in, in this Miami offense from the passing standpoint. So I, I like Devontae Parker. I think as the season continues to grow by, you'll see him and Tua develop a nice little chemistry. And Jarvis Landry is a guy that I had talked about being a buy low over the second half of the season. And I'm going to pull up his schedule for you. I'm going to pull up his schedule for you. Um, and it's fucking juicy, right? I know he's coming off a bad game in which, again, they were playing with crazy, crazy wins. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt combined for 38 carries. That will probably not be the case going forward. They play Philadelphia, Jacksonville, Tennessee. So three beatable matchups through the air in those three. Baltimore's obviously really tough. Marlon Humphrey's going to be tough. Then he gets the Giants and the Jets in the fantasy playoffs. So again, no Odell Beckham and hopefully better weather down the stretch means that we will see more from this passing offense. So the schedule is arguably the best schedule for a fantasy wide receiver to end the year. Uh, Antonio Brown, I, I don't know. You just never really know what you're going to get from him. And right now it doesn't seem like he is the number one target there. They're going to continue to take turns sharing weeks, I think, but he has his buy in week 13 still. Mark Cooper, I don't know. It, it's just so hard to be confident in a Mark Cooper with not Dak at quarterback. And Brandon Ayuk, I think you could certainly make the case that he belongs at the top of the tier, if not in the tier above, because he's been so good. But my question is, after this buy, does, um, does Debo Samuel return? And does Debo Samuel start to take away, you know, 30% of those targets? That is my concern. Brandon Ayuk has literally been the only wide receiver there that can make plays while he's on the field, right? We saw when Brandon Ayuk was out, it was Richie James. When Debo Samuel's out, it's Brandon Ayuk. When Debo Samuel's in, you know, who knows? That 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 is my concern with Brandon Ayuk. But if you wanted to take him over these guys, I have absolutely no problem with that. And they also have their buy in week 11. So maybe most are coming back, makes them a little bit more ground relevant, even though they're ground relevant every fucking game, regardless of who is there. And then tier seven, uh, tier seven, ah, shit. I didn't, uh, did I make a tier for this? Yeah, I did. Squirt. Why the fuck did... Oh, no. I just clicked the wrong button. So, Tier 7, we have Christian Kirk, Corey Davis, Travis Fulgham, Jameson Crowder, Jacoby Myers, Jerry Judy, Marquise Brown. And honestly, I probably should have put Jalen Rager over Marquise Brown because they've just been terrible. Christian Kirk's been hot. Obviously, had a bad game this previous week. And again, these are tiers. These are not necessarily like, I love Christian Kirk OV over Jacoby Myers. They're all in the same tier for me. Travis Fulgham, clearly a victim of the Eagles getting... Uh, a lot of their healthy weapons back. Miles Sanders, Jalen Rager, uh, Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz is going to be back soon. So he takes a big plummet. Corey Davis has been consistent. So I, I, I think he should be in the wide receiver three conversation. And uh, Jameson Crowder, I don't know what the fuck's going on with his groin. So if he comes back, he'll move up the rankings. And that's really uh, that's really it. I think Tim Patrick can be in the conversation. But listen, if I listed every fucking wide receiver here, we'd be here all day. And like I said, I've got things to do. I've got people to see. I've got to see a woman about a horse. I've got to fucking get on Twitter and start making fleets. I don't know if you all, you all saw the Twitter update today, but they put stories. They put <laughs> this. Uh, I order groceries. I order through this app called Shipt, S-H-I-P-T. And they're always usually like robot or automated person sent me uh on the way to deliver my groceries and they sent me a Forrest Gump gif I like that I like when people don't act like fucking robots it's fun it makes life fun and uh I hope this video was like semi fun for y'all today even though I blasted through it I tried my best to keep it concise to keep it valuable to keep it nice and gift wrapped like a present I need to speaking of get some lights for the Christmas tree also if y'all use fake Christmas trees which you know I talked about in my vlog that came out the other day for a long time um I love I've always used a real Christmas tree this is the first year that I didn't and it's not the same without the smell but I grabbed these things off Amazon they're called 
Where art thou? Centacles. Centacles. Oh, wow. That just zoomed in beautifully. They're on Amazon. Just type in Centacles Christmas tree or yeah, Christmas tree and you stick them on your tree and this whole bitch smells like Christmas tree scented flavored candles. I will light those candles up 365 days a year. Best candle flavor, best candle scented flavor. I'll eat them shits too. That's how much I like them. All right. I'm out. Make sure that if you did enjoy, you hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I might just do a rest of season rankings video actually every single Tuesday. Let me know down below if you want me to do like an updated risers and fallers rest of season rankings. That's actually pretty easy for me because we'll make slight adjustments on the way. Um, so yeah, drop a comment if you want to see that every Tuesday going forward. And if you want the rest of season rankings without having to listen to this bullshit, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. I'm out. I love y'all. Goodbye.